If you have your Bibles with you, we'd ask you to turn to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 4, and we're going to begin reading in the first verse. Revelation chapter 4, and we'll begin reading in the first verse. The Bible says, And after this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as if it were a trumpet talking with me, and I and come up and said, Come up hither, and I will shew thee things that must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one that sat on the throne. And he, and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and sardin stone, and there, was a, uh, and there was a rainbow about the throne in, in sight like unto an emerald. And round right about the throne were four and twenty elders, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne, proceeding thundering, preceded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. <coughs> and before the throne was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts, full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and the rest, and they rest not day and night, crying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for your holy word. Lord, we thank you for the people that are gathered here this morning in thy name. We know that no one is here by accident, Lord, but rather by, uh, by design, Lord, by your uh, sovereign will and by your holiness they have come. God, this morning we pray that you would bless them according to your mercy and grace. Allow us to receive truth from your word. And we'd be faithful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it all. For it's in Christ's name that we do pray. Amen. Now, uh, very familiar verses of Scripture. And what we'll be uh, preaching is about the thrice holy God. Now, uh, you don't hear a great deal about this, uh, these Scriptures except many times in abstract, and I think the further I go along with God's people, the less I see preached from this book. And I don't know if it's a lack of understanding or afraid that something will be said that's out of order, but, and I really don't know, but uh, the book of the Revelation needs to be looked in. It's our preparatory book. It, is, it, will, it will give you a peace in the day which we live. Things are falling apart at the seams, Amen. and we need to know why, and we need to know what's next. And if you have that, all things are beneficial, and all things will be comfortable. Now, in the first three chapters, and this is just my own opinion, uh, those are true churches. We know that from the Word of God. You can find them in the Word of God. And I think those churches were getting, the Asian churches we're giving their warnings. I've heard it preached as seven dispensations of the church age, and I don't necessarily have any uh, anything against that, but the Bible really doesn't say that either. But I do know that they were genuine, real churches, and I know all but one of them had a problem, and some of them had many problems. And uh, so we find that after this is over with, 
And if you know your Bible, we know that John the uh, John the uh, Apostle is alone by himself on an isle called Patmos, and he was put there to starve to death for preaching the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we also know that that did not happen. God preserved him, and he went on in his ministry many years after this, as far as we know. But uh, I want you to see that very frequently, and just remember this as well, John was an apostle. He saw things, he experienced things that we never will because he fulfilled the office of apostle. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bible says, I placed some in the church, first apostles. Uh, that, that, that office does not exist anymore because we can't meet the qualifications for it. When you see apostolic holiness church, just know that that's not a genuine church because they're claiming an office that you don't have the right to. And, and so, because if you follow that, it says the baptism of John, meaning baptism of John the Baptist, and no one living has the baptism of John. Uh, he died <laughs> centuries ago. And, and, and so we find as uh, we look in this, always look when you're looking at scriptures, who's writing it, who is it written to, and uh, huh, when is the time that it's written. So John is in this isolated condition, all by himself, a place where many of us would want to give up, and God begins to speak to him. And it says, after this, meaning these wonderful church letters and, 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 and seeing Christ once again in the flesh, after this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. Now, uh, what I found in the modern day church is this, many times a door is open, and of course not to the lofty third heaven of God, but we have a door of opportunity opened, and we never take it. Uh, if anything is more crippling to our, the church today is people not taking an opportunity to spread the gospel, to go to other places, and, and, and to teach the people of God. That, that's a missed opportunity. That, that's something uh, that handicaps the church in the modern age. And so uh, you put yourself in John's situation and, and, and answer quite honestly, would you go through the door or not? Now, in, in reality, I think I would be a, a, a little cautious about approaching the holy God of heaven. Um, even on the merit of Christ, it, it humbles me to think that one day I will sit before the almighty God of heaven. Uh, you know, I think very frequently with easy believism and say this little prayer and you're magically saved, you know what? That dishonors God in every way possible. Because, see, God, what does the Bible say concerning God himself? He doeth, he doeth what seemeth good unto himself. Uh -huh. If he saved you, it's because of his goodness. Right. It wasn't good anything you've done. And, and so we see, I personally would have had some apprehension about going into this place that John went to. And the reason why is because God is holy. The voice, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me. Now, uh, a trumpet uh, in that day, it wasn't just something in the high school band that, that went around. The trumpet was a distinct call to service, a call to duty, like in an army. And, and those, those trumpets had significance, and they, they told you where you were to be and told you what you were to be doing. That's the type of trumpet that had this call in John's life. Now, again, that brings us to the question, will you answer the call? Now, I've got uh, two young men and women today, so give me a great opportunity to answer the call. When you hear the trumpet, answer the call. Because less and less and less people are, uh, are doing that in, in the modern age. And so John has this opportunity to respond. Notice the invitation, come up hither and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. Now I want you to notice two things. First of all, the invitation to come 
And I want you to see the wording that must be hereafter. In other words, there, there, there's no option. There's no changing. You're, we're not going to thwart the plan of the mighty God of heaven. If he spoke it, it will come to pass. And you know what a great comfort that is to us. You know what? If you broke your leg, God's in it. <laughs> I haven't broken a leg yet. I broke some bones. I don't want to break a leg. Uh, a lot of people, as a nurse and as an EMT, uh, the pain's so bad you pass out. I don't want to break a leg. But if it happens, somehow, some way, God's in it. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and so we find then that this invitation, uh, uh, this invitation to see, if you will, what's going to be was specific to John. Verse 2. And immediately... I was in the Spirit. Now, if you have your King James Bible before you, you see little s Spirit. Not meaning I was in the Spirit like the Pentecostals teach. I was in the Spirit. No, that's a little s Spirit. So that means Him. That means the individual John. Uh, we've talked about this many times. You met those people that are just mean and hateful. And, and, and my grandmother would say they just have a foul spirit. Well, that, that, is, that is what it means. See, you know why sometimes we don't hear from God when we get to the Lord's house? Because we're not in the spirit. Mm -hmm. We come and we bring garbage with us. We bring, right. we bring, you know, and I know ladies always fix us a great meal and you burn yourself on the stove and, and, and you burn your chicken and then you have to come down there to the house of God and, and try to worship, right? Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, John was in the right frame of mind, if you would. He was ready. Now you see, he had all these things against him. He was isolated. He was by himself. It was the Lord's day, and, and he couldn't go to church. But it says he was in the Spirit. Yeah. You know what? Sometimes you may be laid up in the hospital on the Lord's day. Are you going to be in the Spirit? Are you going to be ready? Uh, are, are you going to be ready to have, uh, have some communion with the Lord? And, and he was, and he was in the right Spirit, and he was ready to go. And notice what he says. And behold, a throne was set in heaven... And one sat on the throne. Now, all the people, uh, that, that all the individuals, all the persons of the Godhead uh, are, are part of the Lord God. But listen, there's one, the Lord God Jehovah, the mighty God of heaven. He sits on the throne. And the Bible says that his son sits next to him. That's the God of the Bible. And, and, and we see John getting a glimpse of that, and, and, and it changed his life forever. I would not give you 10 cents for a salvation experience that did not impact your life. Now, it, it's useless. Mother used to say, just as Jesus says, a three legged horse. Right? You, you, you're going to depend on that? You're going to pretend to depend on a three-legged horse to get you away from the fire? Certainly not. So why, why, would, you, uh, why would you take something insignificant for salvation? And, and, and so we find that um, he has this experience and he is ready to hear from God. He sees the blessed God of heaven. Verse 3 and I had to study this out because a lot of times I've read through this and maybe go a little too quick uh, for my own good. But I want you to see it says here, And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper stone. Now, in studying that, because I've often wondered what the significance of the stone, well, it just so happens that this, the way this is written, that was the same stone as the ephod. That, that was a portion of the priestly garments. That, that shows that he is the God of the Bible. He is the intercessor. This is, it, 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 was, it was something that John, as a good Jew, immediately understood and says, I know who you are. That, 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 that was significant in identification. It says, yes, I am who you think I am. Remember, remember the day Moses was saved and he said, Lord God, what will I tell him? 
tell them I am sent you. <laughs> That's what you tell them. And, and, and so we find that this peace that he saw on the throne and, and this wonderful person of God, he identifies immediately of whom he is. And it says, and uh, a, a sardin stone, and those are actually red, and it was on the breastplate. So all this was for identification of the intercessor. Uh, uh, you remember once a year when the, when, when the chief priest would go into the holies of holies and he would make that annual sacrifice for God's people? This was his workup. This is what he wore. This is what he was wearing. And, and you remember it had, it had bells in the hemline. So when they were back there and, and he was doing his work, his bells were ringing. And what if they stopped? You remember that? They put a rope on his foot, and if it stopped, they'd drag him out because he'd done messed up. <laughs> See, they, they would, uh, the mighty God of heaven would take their life if it wasn't, wasn't done just right. So we see the very person of the Almighty. John gets this opportunity. Sees him lifted up, sees him glorified. Uh, what, a, what a wonderful thing. You know, we go down to the church the majority of the time in 2023, and we do not see God high and lifted up. We are so boggled down with the world. We are so uh, messed up by the stuff that we see, and we never really see the God of heaven. Now, and, and then on top of that, us as good sovereign bracers, we blame it on God when we don't. Well, you know, he just didn't show up this morning. Yeah. Well, the Bible teaches me he's everywhere. <laughs> right? He's everywhere and every time, all at the same time. <laughs> what, what, what a better God could you have? So then the problem must be upon us if that is the situation, and I, I, I certainly do believe that that is the situation that, they're, uh, that he's speaking of. And so he sees the Lord God Almighty in his fullness, in his ele elegance. Verse 4. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. Now I've heard a lot of teaching on this. They don't necessarily defy any of it. Don't know exactly what it is. Some say it's the twelve tribe heads and the twelve apostles. Well, uh, my only problem with that is one of them was a devil. <laughs> right? And you know, but you know what? That portion doesn't matter. What matters is that they were there. What matters is there were 12 holy men of God sitting before the throne, sitting and doing the, and, and, and worshiping God for whom he is. And, and uh, it was... Uh, it, it, it's unbelievable even the, the the ability to do this and round about the throne were four and twenty seats and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders now I have that underlined in my Bible from some years ago and it's the only identity the only identifying quality of any of these men is that they were elders now what is an elder? Two, two things in the New Testament Bible that elders are, they're old men like me, and they're ordained men like me. You see what I'm saying? So I don't know what the, I don't know who these men are, and whoever tells you they know who these men are, don't, don't know. But I do know this, apparently they've given their lives for the service of God. And not necessarily their lives, but they laid it down, that they may have had to, but from they had give their working life to the Almighty. They give their best years unto Christ. And that's what an elder does. And if they have a getting off place, then certainly they're probably not what they claim to be. And so these, these individuals were before the throne and, and, and was, was taking it all in. And out of the throne <coughs> proceeded, proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. Now, uh, I am not a man, and I never have been. I don't know if I don't have sense enough to, or if I just trust God enough that it don't bother me. But uh, storms do not scare me, 
In fact, uh, sometimes I have an unhealthy interest in them. Uh, because, you know, again, if you believe God's sovereign, if you get struck by lightning, you know who, you know who authored that? The Lord. But I don't think this is a storm like we think we do here in between the rivers area. We have some good ones. And, uh, but but what, I, what I really believe, it was a display of the power of God. Now, with that said, who runs toward lightning? Mother used to say, about a half bubble off, right? <laughs> uh, running toward the lightning. So when we get to heaven, you know, everybody said, oh, this stuff about getting to heaven, some of it makes me so sick. Well, I, I want to see mama first. Listen, mama ain't even on the run, <laughs> right? We'll be so captivated by the, by the holy presence of God, the only thing you will want to do is be with Him. Now, uh, uh, when I've heard a lot of people say, well, I'm going to kiss the feet of Jesus. Not this one. I guess if He asked me to kiss Him, I would. But see, I'm too ungodly. I'm too filthy. I, I am too far separated that I would ever touch the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we'll see what that distance is about. I, I'm, I'm not real sure all this that encompasses. Uh, uh, but I do know this. Understanding the holy God of heaven, you must respect him like you do a, a bad storm. You must respect him that he can cause all the destruction that he wishes. Can he grant life? You betcha. Can he create life out of nothing? I know he can. He did. But he, above all things, is to be lifted up and respected. Amen. And, in, and, and in the modern day, when you can just invite him into your heart, what kind of respect is that? That puts you in control. It takes the control from God and places it in you. You know what? If he hadn't saved me, I'd still be lost. The man, you know, very few people, you ever, well, I, I was seeking God. Well, a few words because he was seeking you. <laughs> right? Uh, that, listen, us looking and, and wanting a relationship with God is not even in our intellect unless God intervenes. And so we see that uh, this, uh, these things coming off the throne were for respect. Verse 5, about halfway through, and there were seven lamps. Now we just addressed the seven churches and all that was going on with them and, and the problems that they were having and, and the church of Philadelphia was, 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 was encouraged greatly. Not one thing wrong with the church at Philadelphia, the only one of the seven. And, and after all that's done, we have seven lamps. Now, the, the, this is a two-fold thing. Number one, remember it said, uh, you better get something taken care of or I'm going to put your lamp out. <laughs> that's what he told the other six churches, remember? And now also, where else was the uh, seven candlesticks at? In Jared's brain. They were in the temple. They were in the temple. And so we uh, again find the church age in the Old Testament in unison, right before the uh, thrice holy God of heaven. And, and it's a perfect picture of both of those times coming, coming in, in, in perfect unison together. Then he says, a five burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Now, we know that there are not seven literal persons of the Godhead. So what are these seven spirits? What, what are these individuals? Now, I did some studying, and this is just extra stuff, and you can study about this week because it's another man's ideas. Uh, not the Word of God, but this supposedly in the Jewish culture are the seven spirits of God. A spirit of uh, wisdom, 
a spirit of the Lord, a spirit of understanding, a spirit of counsel, a spirit of power, a spirit, a spirit of knowledge, and a spirit of fear. Now, uh, we'll just tag on to fear very, very lightly. We've been preaching on this a lot lately. The Lord brings it back to me again and again. We need to fear God. Uh, he can snuff you out in a moment's time. That would bring me fear. You ever thought, those of you that are redeemed, set to saved with me, if you never have come from God again, how lonely. If the Holy Ghost never came by and said, you're mine, <laughs> I'm with you. Yeah. In the most difficult time of your life, if he's not there and holding you up when you can't hold yourself up. See, that, 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 those are those times. So uh, I fear God. Yes, I fear him. With, and, and you know, as my age goes on, I want to fear him more tomorrow than I did yesterday because understanding the holiness of God will bring a natural fear of the person of God. He's not your buddy. He's not your good old friend. He, he, he is the God of the Bible. Purely holy, purely uh, unapproachable without the blood of Christ. He is God. And we live in a day and age today uh, where the God is love attitude has demoralized God no more than you think of your pet. Pepper and Shiloh, that's our pets. You know what they are? They're pets. They're, they're, and the girls may beat me after church. You know what? Pepper and Shiloh are beneath me. They are a created being. They are an animal. And we're way below God, too. And so we see these men are fixing to do something. And the reason why is they recognized who God was. They're fixing to do an unusual thing, uh, two, two, two-fold thing. And the reason they did it, they understood at least for a moment whom God was. Now, uh, I don't know about you, but in my life, sometimes I'm captivated by the person of God, and then at other times I forget who he is. You see what I'm saying? When you're captivated, when, when he's all-encompassing, and listen, that, that, that only happens a few times. It, it, it's not a daily thing. But when he does, you've got a glimpse of God. You've got a glimpse of who he is, and that's what's happening here. Verse 6, and before the throne, there was a sea of glass. Now, I've only known one individual that can walk on water, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, even in glory, we found this distant separation. And you know why? Because he's holy. They were on this side of the glass sea, and he was on that, that side of the glass sea. See, our God is unapproachable. If it wasn't for the blood of Christ, we wouldn't even know who he is. Right. Right. We, 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 th this, this thing in the end times where you run up and hug Jesus, listen, that's out of a sorry southern gospel song. Right? Individuals that don't understand the, whole, the thrice holy God that we serve. And, and, and so we see that he... Huh, he is somewhat separated from all these individuals around him. And, uh, and in the midst of the throne, and round about the throne, the end of verse 6, the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. It means, you, you know, you used to think your mama had eyes in the back of her head. That means they're all encompassing. They can see in every direction. You know what? It's an unbelievable thing. If you'll be honest with yourself, that the mighty God of heaven knows every thought that's ever crossed your mind. That, that'll lay you on your, on your back, will it not? It does me. Y'all may be in better shape than me, but I don't think so. 
That, that, that's the person of God. And, and he conveys that to these all-seeing beings that can see before and behind and on the side and, and see everything that has movement about it. Verse 7, And the first beast was like a lion. Now, this is, this is, my, this is my thinking on this. All these individuals are very different in character. I've only seen a lion at a zoo. And those, those lion zoos are not the real, I mean those zoo lions are not the real deal. Right? You, you want to see a real lion, go to Africa and get out there in the jungle and you'll find out about what one's all about. Right? Their character is vicious. They're very protective of their domain. You don't mess with my land. You, you cross that line, you're going to get it. Only good thing about being killed by a lion, I guess it's quick. Right? But we find here that this lion's character has been completely changed. And it is worshiping the mighty God of heaven. The next one you have is a lamb. Lambs are stupid. When he called you his sheep, it wasn't a compliment. Lambs are really, really dumb creatures. Uh, I've told you all about the story when I was in nursing school. A lamb's brain is about like a human brain. They're shaped the same and about the same size. And again, that isn't a compliment in creation. And uh, Miss Barry made us do all this examination on the brain, and they have cranial nerves just like we do. Very interesting thing. And we got to notice that in all our, our brains, there's a huge bruise right here in the front of every one of them. And I thought, well, Miss Barry, uh, I, think, I think this lamb had a stroke. And she chuckled, and pretty soon the lab table behind me, ours has got the same thing. Miss Barry started laughing then. And she goes, this is the story of that. When lambs are being slaughtered, they are so useful. Every inch of them, from the wool down to the mutton, is so useful. They have the lambs get in the line. They walk up to the butcher block, and they slam them with a hammer. And that's how they're taken down. And the next one, you know what the next one does? He walks up right behind that one. And does the very same thing. Mm -hmm. And so does the next one and the next one. And, and so again, when the Lord said that, he wasn't being complimentary to say that we were sheep. But we notice how this ferocious lion comes to Christ and out of this little bitty kind, gentle lamb comes the very same praise. And, and, and giving God the glory for who he is. And we see those, those two individuals giving God the praise. Also, just remember this when you get caught up in yourself. You see these big mega churches and praise and worship teams and all the foolishness that goes with that. If he wants to be praised, he can get a, he can get a, a line to praise his holy name. He can get a, a sheep to glorify his name. He doesn't need you. Not even in the least. Well, what did he say whenever they were praising God that time? And I think uh, one of the apostles says, get them quietened down. Or maybe, maybe it was some of the Jews. And he says, if they be quiet, those stones are going to cry out to me. You see, that's the God we serve. He, he has at his disposal anything he wishes to praise his holy name. And we see these, all these individuals doing that. The second, like a calf, the third beast had a face as of a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. Verse 9. I mean, verse 8. And the four beasts had each of them six wings. If, you, if those sound familiar with you, read Isaiah chapter 6, and you'll see those six wings again about him. And they were full of eyes within. Now, I think that's very, very significant, and I promise you we're almost done. Because we just read about these beasts being full of eyes before, before and behind. And then now we see 
They're, they have eyes that look within. That's an amazing thing, isn't it? My eyes see all this, and if I turn about, I can see the whole building. But can you imagine having the ability to see within? See, the Holy Ghost will give you that ability. You'll see how rotten and disgusting and needful you really are. That's looking within. He, 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 uh, everybody says, well, how do you know you're saved? Look within. Look within. We, we have that ability. We have, and, and you know, when you see yourself for what you really are, you will cry out to Christ. If you ever see yourself in the, in, in the way that you really are, your only option is to cry out to Christ. That's why he, John had just said to the churches, he that have an ear, let him hear. Because see, not everybody has an ear. Uh, these fleshly ears of mine are on the downhill run. But uh, you know what? I have a spiritual ear that does me a lot better than these two do. And, and so we find that uh, if you can do this, look within, see where you're at, know where you're at. And then lastly says that those, those created things, those things right there, they rest not day or night saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. So we, we find these things praising God, giving Him glory. That, that's also verbatim from Isaiah uh, chapter 6. Holy. And you know, you, you think about all the centuries it's been since the day of Isaiah. They're still doing that today. Mm -hmm. All the centuries have been since John was stranded on the Isle of Patmos, and it's still happening today. We'll join that one day. You know, there's been a few times where I was so near to the Lord. I wanted to cry, Holy, Holy, Holy! But if you do that, you're going to be branded at Pentecost, <laughs> right? No, it's not a Pentecostal thing. It's when you know you're in the presence of the Almighty. When you see yourself unworthy and Him as the only singular holy thing ever. They call the Pope the Vicar of Christ. You, Donald, I mean, uh, uh, Jarrett was talking about uh, names. You know what they uh, call the Pope of Vicar, it literally means intercessor. The Pope is their intercessor. He's not mine. <laughs> I have an intercessor, and his name is Jesus, yeah. the very Son of God. Would you want a Pope to be your intercessor? If you were coming to me and wanting something from Larry, who would you send? My guess is y'all would send either, either one of my grandchildren, <laughs> Or you can send one of my daughters, right? <laughs> if you send my grandchildren, you probably don't get it, <laughs> right? Very same way. My, my, my prayers, feeble and as selfish as they are, go on the wings of Christ and make them exactly what they need to be to lay out before the throne. I don't need the vicar. I have, I have, I have the very person of Christ. What about you? Are you really able to cry holy, holy? Have you, have you ever seen yourself so far and so, and so separated from Christ all you can do is cry out to Him? That's what we need. Yeah. That, that's the very essence of revival. Over the years I've studied revival a whole lot. And the Great Awakenings, I'm not sure if that was what revival was about or not. Maybe. Maybe people just wanted to be seen, too. But I do know that revival is this. When you spend individually time with Christ. And not only do you spend individually time with Christ, but He does what you do what He bids you to do. That's revival.